タンタンタン<laughs> so there's. I can't believe you did that. He doesn't want to be left behind. <laughs> I, I love it. I'm also kind of, I don't know, nervous for him. This guy. He's something. He'll be the best damn ball boy. Though something occurred to me after uh, watching episode one again during editing and just revisiting it. My initial reaction to the coach letting him on the team was one of joy and respect for him because we know how he feels about Hinata and that Hinata represents kind of an existential threat. He could have just like crushed Hinata's dreams right there and that would have been the end of it and he could have gotten some sick self-satisfaction out of doing that. I mean, I still think that the fact that he didn't do that is good. I'm not sure if, if it's as healthy as I initially wanted it to be. Like, there's still a possibility for the coach to kind of enact his revenge. And part of what the coach said there is true. A lot of his success has been due to Kageyama. Is not actually worthy of being there? I mean, he's, you know, a great athlete. Is he on that level on his own merits? Not as clear. I mean, I think he could be. If there's anything Hinata has at an exceptional level or, or really S-tier level is his internal composition and motivation. So like he will get as far as he possibly physically can. Is he worthy of being in this squad right now based on his volleyball ability alone? Maybe not. Either way, I respect the guts to show up and I know it will be good for him because even if they keep him as a ball boy forever, he's gonna have an opportunity to like sneak in during rest time and when the coach's not around, etc. Just like Tsuki with the, uh, the training camp. He'll hopefully get his reps in. Episode two, loss. <laughs> The serve was so important up to this point. And a lot of them don't don't have jump serves yet. It does seem like something really useful to work on. I wonder what that scene is setting up. That's obviously there for a reason. I don't know what it is about the season, but even just in like 1.2 episodes, it feels different from the preceding three. And it's not the animation. It's something about whatever it is they're trying to build here. We know all about that. Oh no, oh no, <laughs> not names. Right, actually, I need this. Let's do this name drill. I'm gonna get kicked off the team so fast. <laughs> well, Hanada's definitely got his attention one way or the other. He's got the weirdest stares. I wonder how these other people feel watching Hanada sit on the sidelines as a ball boy after his team like beat them. Oh, is this is this two meter tall, dude? How tall is he? <laughs> oh, yes, we like that. We like big and strong. Mm. Mm -hmm. Damn, he's giving more energy into scolding Hinata than he is on, on coaching the team. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah, I'm starting to think there's something kind of sick about this. Oh, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, it could be so many things. I'm so curious to see how Coach develops this season. The optimist in me wants to think that it's like a Mr. Miyagi type thing where he's trying to push Hinata into being great through harshness, but it doesn't seem that way. It seems more likely that he's just bitter. He's just waiting for Hinata to make a mistake to destroy him. <laughs> Who knows? Who knows? Possible. People are very petty. You alright? Hinata, what's going on? It's lots of process. Someone's gonna stick around and play for sure. Hinata's... No one? Someone. Someone. That's for damn sure. Oh, he's practicing his jump serve. Ironically, the practice he might have been got, he might have, he would have been doing had he stayed stayed with his team in school. Oh well. This sucks, man. This sucks to watch Nada just doing this alone. It's interesting. So you are toast.
Ooh, what an image. Yeah, Suki's kind of a freak, right? Like, he went from not caring anywhere near as much as Nana did to being, like, the MVP, pretty much. And he's got this height advantage that is no one's fault or doing. Ooh, this is kind of rough. That was harsh. I don't know what to make of this, man. I really don't know what to make of it. It's so interesting. There's so many things mixed in together and it's hard to know what's the ratio. Referring to a bunch of characters that are interacting with Hinata, like Coach, Suki, Kageyama. There's jealousy. There's fear in the sense that sometimes when you really want something and you envision the path there, you get stuck on fear of some, of, some or all of the individual steps. And one way to soothe that pain is to kind of label it as impossible. So when someone comes along and isn't afraid or kind of blasts through those challenges and takes it on and looks like they might even succeed, in the best case scenario, you want to see that happen because it shatters that illusion you have and maybe frees you up to try yourself. But I think, honestly speaking, what happens in most cases is you want them to fail because you'd rather confirm the belief you have that it's impossible because you've grown accustomed to that and it lets you off the hook. And to have that not be the case also means having to justify all this time you've wasted and perhaps your own weakness that's difficult to look at, etc. Hinata is kind of this trailblazer He's defying a lot of odds and what people ex expect, like the coach. And so in that sense, he's a threat to their worldview and invokes fear. Something similar would be true if people were overly attached to their talent, let's say. Whereas Hinata is not innately talented at volleyball, he's innately athletic and he makes up the difference through hard work. Then there are more positive things potentially mixed in, like, you know, just wanting to challenge him to see him rise further or something benign like teasing. But so far, it really feels like people are just taking shots at Hinata. I mean, he put himself on the chopping block and... They're more than happy to chop his neck off. Like, how dare he step out of line? Yeah, Karasuno,日向。時間ギリギリまでボール触ってましたね。まあ、押しかけはびっくりしましたけども。We all were. I think <laughs> I was. I was shocked. Still love it. Who are you, coach? あの小僧がこの合宿中何かひたむきな努力根性を見せようと思う練習に加えるつもりはねえよ。all right, so indeed, why keep him around? Just to suffer? What an honor. What an honor. Fledged himself, showing up to training camp. He's just eating it. Every day from everyone. Something's boiling. Pressure's building. There's something weird here. Something backwards as well. A lot of people use Hinata as the beacon. He's the person that they're trying to compete with. He's one of the biggest motivators of rivalry and hard work. But that was also a really interesting vision he had of the fact that he's not the only one progressing. I mean, everyone is doing really well. Everyone's progressing. What's it going to take? I mean, that's another one of his goals in the show so far is that he's constantly kind of taking stock in the fact that he's gotten comfortable and going through a lot of pain and angst and turmoil to strip himself down and start over from a new plateau. That was the whole deal in season two with the quick. It sort of worked out that way. <laughs> get a lot of exercise chasing those balls. <何かを出すには一歩一歩順を追ってすまればならない。以上>。<laughs> I feel like there is a, a deep cultural element to this. Like the fact that he broke protocol. Right? Come on, give him some love. Someone. Oh, that's, that's, yeah, that's scary. There you go. Some love, finally. Yeah, he's, man, he's not looking good. He's on thin, thin thread. Okay, all right, yeah, we need something. Give him something. But how tall is he? <laughs> all right, just get through this, get through this phase. People will lighten up, right? They'll lighten up. When you make a huge mistake, it's like going into the apology that's the worst phase and then just rapidly gets better from there. Just gotta face it, face it and get through it. He knew the deal. He knew the bargain. It's part of the cost of admission. Balls of steel. Nice 
Uh, he will get like something out of this. It's not clear if it's the best thing he could be working on. But I mean, speaking of Karate Kid, he's getting something, no? Exercise, vision of ball movement, lateral movement. He acted like he really did something there. You can get a lot out of watching something too. Nothing's gonna be better than practice. But I feel like I have learned things from sports from stepping out for a little bit. Like if you're too deep into it, if your vision is perhaps too narrow, sometimes sitting out can help. I think the conclusion for me in this is that he's gonna get better. It's gonna help his game. It's just not clear that this is the best thing for him. Like, is it the best use of his time? I think that's up to him. I think Hanada is also acutely aware of something that is good to look at and good to understand that sports emulates well, which is how quickly you can just become irrelevant. It's so based on merit. I mean, you could win a championship, you could be great, and then you can be irrelevant the next year, depending on you. Hanada seems to feel that very deeply. Hey, it's big bro Ushiwaka and friends. It was kind of awkward. Oh, it feels so embarrassing. Not of being the ball boy in front of Ushiwaka, who he just beat. I wonder what Ushiwaka will think about that. Yeah. So he can probably still feel the pain in his hand. I don't think you're in this one, my friend. Yeah, yeah, I, they know each other, but he's not playing, by the way. Oh, your timing, though, is not amazing. I'm the ball boy. Oh, ouch. Ah, oh, it's so painful. It hurts. He's done. That was his last volleyball play. I like this guy because he just, he's not afraid to ask questions and like just cuts to the heart of matters. I don't like it. I feel. I don't know, how does Ushiwaka feel about it? Because he's a passionate guy, but he also seems very, I don't know, by the numbers, respectful. Oh, that hurt. He said so little, but so much at the same time. I mean, it's a valid question. He's right. What are you doing here? Wow, Karasuna's practice just seems so much more fun. Oh, well, I think it's fundamentally different, no? The problem with Shirtori Zawa's coach is not wanting to win. I think the only time that's been an issue for anyone was the Slytherin team in the OVA because they were actually playing dirty. As long as you're playing clean, that's the point. I think what's unsatisfying about Shiro Torizawa's coach's methods is the fact that he's bringing in ringers. What it isn't is taking a group of players that you have organically already and then finding out how they best work, how they best fit, and how they best come together. Because again, while the point of sports is victory, the, the larger point is to use this as a model for realities of life to test yourself against things that do have binary outcomes to force yourself into a system where there is no reconciling or or making excuses it's just pass or fail so that you can get the lessons and incorporate some of these realities into your own being so that it helps you grow as a person and do better in in your life that is sort of lost if rather than cultivating the people that you have you are just bringing in people who are let's say tall it's like let's say you're playing the sims or something like that with a group of human beings and the goal is to win it's like okay you could just go into to the settings and give max money, max attractiveness, max intelligence, max every stat, and yeah, you'd win, you'd coast through it, but did you really learn anything about humanity? Was anything gained other than just the victory? What character was developed? What was learned? Is there a feeling of deservedness of the victory? Like, was your elation at winning backed up by tangible hard work and sacrifice and growth that you can point to? Or was it just kind of like handed to you? The circumstance of things is kind of the least interesting when it comes to the human struggle. Things that you are just born with can be really enjoyed and valued, but is not really where you're going to evaluate yourself at the end of the day like what you're born with is just kind of your default and normal and it's hard to get any real deep level satisfaction for that for who you are in that whole process and even worse and maybe more importantly 
it turns out that even according to the the outcome or the desire to win the game, his strategy was wrong because they lost, or at least it's not optimal. Or at least, at least, we can say that Karosuno's approach is better. They are not the tallest. They are not the most naturally apt at volleyball, but they had something more important. And that thing does actually represent, I feel at least, something applicable broadly to humanity and life itself. So Karasuno won and won, if, if you know what I mean. That's why I'm not sure what I'm saying. 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 Meanwhile, Shirtozawa coach, we should keep them as tall as possible. Keep them tall. Keep them tall and powerful. Watch him poach the two meter tall guy. Don't let them see this. Yeah, he's not over it. Don't let them see you bleed. He walked into this fire voluntarily. Wow. <laughs> Cleaning! <laughs> Mopping? <laughs> What is the thing only you can do there? God, Ujiwaka is so scary. He's so ruthless. This is no BS about his life. It just feels like everything he does is perfect and right. As someone who, uh, <laughs> I would say, is all over the place in a lot of ways, those kind of people are death. Anyway, I don't know what the answer is for Hinata to that question, but I mean, I know he can get a lot out of this. I think he made this choice. He's here. Okay, that's, it is what it is. People rail on him for that. He ate crap. They just all shoved it in his face gleefully sucks that is what it is it's done it's the reality people are going to continue dumping on him for the rest of this training camp probably okay but that's not the goal that's not why we're here it only hurts if they're right it only hurts if Hinata actually doesn't get anything out of it and if it is a waste of time and that's partly why their words sting so much because Hinata understands that's a real risk he could be wasting time people could be passing him he could get nothing out of this that's why his usual unshakable optimism left him for a minute but if he manages to pull himself up and be a little bit resilient this is a great opportunity there's the you know the very simple basic stuff from getting exercise chasing the ball watching people play getting vision this is a talented crew of people there's a lot he can pick up just from observing it may not be as good as practice it may not even be the most optimal thing but you know sometimes the perfect is the enemy of the good let that go what it could be is something very unique he could get something out of this that he never would have gotten out of just staying in Karasuno and practicing he's proven himself to be someone who likes to kind of reset to hit a plateau and then collect himself and maybe take a few steps backwards to recalibrate himself so that he's building up stronger this seems like not a bad environment for that and i do suspect he will get practice in it just won't be under coach's eye it'll be you know after practice in their free time it's hard to say right now what the outcome will be i stand by what i said though that i admire his decision to go for it because simply because of the courage it took and i know for a fact that sometimes you go out, out on a limb like this you follow a hunch there's a lot of times it doesn't amount to anything and you end up with egg on your face but also those are sometimes where the the most positive outliers are so many times i've taken just small risks that other people would be embarrassed to take because of the risk of failure especially public failure and it's paid off. Once it's paid off, you know, once you get something out of it and you feel good about what you've done, the entire tone of the whole thing changes. There's there's the opposite of embarrassment. It's something more wholesome than pride. Somebody like Ushiwaka would never do that. And I respect it. I respect that nature of like piece by piece, follow the protocol, maximize every level from the ground up you can. In many ways, I think that can be a better strategy long term, but that doesn't mean that they have a monopoly on the right way and the right path for any one individual. It doesn't mean that sometimes outliers don't crush it. And it doesn't mean that the risk isn't worth taking, even if it doesn't pay off. Like if the only thing you're risking is embarrassment, then there's no risk. There's no danger because embarrassment is not a real threat. It, it's from like an ancient time where if you fell out of the group, you'd, you'd probably be killed by the group or cast out of the group into the wild where wolves would eat you. It's not the case anymore. Like you just get embarrassed and you know, you just walk it off and go home and do something else, watch a movie. Or like Hinata, you remember your goal or find your goal, grit your teeth and get through it. And you come out better for it, hopefully.